Hey guys, um, while rendering my DHL nightmare video, um, my computer crashed and this isn't the first time this has happened during rendering um, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure, I mean, it's pretty clear the only time it does this is when it's under a lot of stress and uh, when either the CPU or the GPU is drawing a lot of power. Now, my I have a 550 watt power supply. My processor, when it's running at 100%, can take up to 120 watts, I think, or 115, or around there. Um, now, my graphics card isn't powerful enough to require the separate power connector. Some of the new ones have that 6-pin or 8-pin or 4-pin PCI Express connector um, to give it extra power, but mine doesn't require that, so uh, that's probably a good thing and a bad thing in some ways. Um, because when it is running full tilt, it probably is just on the edge of needing that um, extra current carrying capability because it'll take it off of a different rail. At this point, it's sharing the same rail as the rest of the motherboard on the 12 volt rail, um, which is good for low power GPUs, but I was trying to render it using the GPU because whenever I do it using the CPU, it always crashed out. So I was starting to think, uh, what the heck could be causing this? Like. You know, this is a, I actually bought a brand name, quite a good uh, power supply. I recently rearranged my cooling um, and it actually brought down the temperatures a little bit. I had one of the fans uh, backwards, I believe. Like you're supposed to have one sucking air in and one blowing air out to keep the air moving. Uh, and I had them both blowing in or something. I can't remember how it was, but I flipped one around. Since I did that though, I've been pulling chunks out, well, I only just found some of it, and I actually, there was a heck of a lot more than what you see here. Um, oh, my camera's gonna die. I better plug it in before it crashes too. Ah, uh, hopefully I can get this plugged in. There we go. So, um, I had a whole bunch more chunks than that that I just pulled out as well. Uh, which is pretty messed up um, and the reason for that being that now that I have the two fans one in the back and the one on the side uh, Working together. I guess I mean there's not even that much dust under there I don't even know where all this dust and hair and stuff is coming from but uh, That I mean there was a pile, you know this big. I'm not even kidding like huge chunks um, And that was for me cleaning the inside of the computer up. So I just popped open the power supply and I just kind of wanted to show you guys what a good power supply and what to look for. Uh, I'm going to need a pointing device. So, one of the big things, my old power supply, remember I showed in my last, one of my videos a long time ago, how about I um, accidentally sent a whole bunch of voltage through my, my breadboard? Well, that was because it touched one of these um, chokes or coils which can often have line voltage going through it. And there's usually, as you can see, there's holes right there. So in my case, a wire stuck through, and I'm pretty sure it touched one of these, and so grounded it, and uh, anyway, uh, and when that happens, of course, it's basically a short, and so this thing, usually they won't shut down right away. They'll just pump out all the current that they're capable of, which in some cases is a, a lot, like 30, 40 amps at whatever voltage. So in this case, this, as you can see, these are heat shrink. All of the coils in here have heat shrink on them, uh, which is a really nice touch. Another thing to look for, this cap right here, it's hard to see, this is actually a Nichicon uh, cap. So that's a really good high quality cap. There's the uh, X caps or whatever they're called, the X rated one on the line input. That's huge, that's really important. Um, another nice little touch was these little daughter riser boards. This is where all the voltage comes off to go to, well, some of them anyway, all the uh, auxiliary voltages um, come off to go out. Some of them go straight down to the board, but some of them come up on this riser board, which is kind of nice, it just keeps things a little more organized. Um, and there's another daughter board over here that has um, an IC on it and a cap. I think that's probably some sort of monitoring system. Um, giving feedback. And it could also be where the thermistor is. What I'm pretty sure is happening is it's uh, tripping the thermal shutdown. It's drawing too much power on one rail and that rail is overheating, is drawing too much current and the thermistor is tripping. It's almost like the emergency shutdown. It's saying, uh-oh, you know, we're getting too hot 
uh, and the computer isn't doing anything about it. Like usually, you know, the computer will start to um, crank up the fans and try and get rid of the hot air. And so it'll give it a little bit of time to do that, but if it doesn't see the temperatures um, falling, or at least staying stable, it probably just kept getting warmer, and so it'll trip the thermistor, and it just cuts power. And that's why the whole system, instead of it crashing in the typical sense where you get like a blue screen, the whole thing would just turn off, bing, all of a sudden, the whole thing would just completely shut off. So that's why I suspected the power supply. Now, I haven't even pulled that much dust out of it yet, so I'm gonna take a closer look in a minute, but I just wanted to show you, I mean, and the nice big chunky heat sinks on all the switching um, MOSFETs, uh, you know, pretty good high quality transformer, um, good input voltage uh, protection, lots of filtering, a few filter cups. Um, this is sort of like a value line one, but it's still made by Corsair. They call it the Builder Series. So it's supposed to be like a, you know, pretty good quality power supply at um, an affordable price for someone who's building their own computer. So as you can see, 550 watts it's capable of supplying. Um, how that's broken up over different rails will vary from power supply to power supply, and I don't have the specs handy for this one, but, you know, there'll be like uh, two or three 12 volt rails. I think in this one there's at least two 12 volt rails, and each one will be able to handle, you know, 10 to 12 amps, sometimes 15 or 20 depending on how powerful your power supply is. And then the 5 volt rail, usually, I mean, nowadays 5 volt isn't used as much, so you'll see, you know, it might be able to do 5 or 8 amps. And then um, the 3.3 volt rail, which, uh, again, not many computers use, will take an amp or two. Um, so the 12 volt rail is really what takes most of the grunt. That's what the CPU uses and the GPU. And they both have, uh, the CPU in all modern computers has a separate connector so that the 12 volt is being carried over multiple wires so that your wires don't get too hot. And also to usually um, spread it over two rails if you have it. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at a half decent power supply. Uh, I'm gonna try and get this up and running to upload these videos. Hopefully they'll be up um, tonight, but who knows? Maybe this will take more work than I think. Bye.